Hi everyone, today I will explain to you the phenomenon of dielectricity, magnetism and electricity. And for this I have a book here, this is from Charles Proteus Steinmetz and it's called Electric Discharges, Waves and Impulses. And I will start with a little bit short theory here, I will keep it short, I promise. But this is needed to understand what I will show you in the experiments afterwards. So keep with me, I will keep it short and easy. So let's start. We have here a cross section of a conductor. And as is stated, the conductor is surrounded by a magnetic field. We, I think we all know that. And if we continue, it also says when an electrostatic or more properly called dielectric field issues from both conductor, that is the dielectric flux. So we have, as we see here, this is a cross section of two conductors and we see here the magnetic field lines and here from here the dielectric field lines. So we have two fields that make up the electric field that surrounds a conductor. And th these two fields are called the dielectric field and the magnetic field. It also says it here, the magnetic and the dielectric field of the conductors both are included in the term electric field and are the two components of the electric field of the conductor. And he continues to say at point eight, the magnetic field or magnetic flux of the circuit is proportional to the current or the amperes that we have in our circuit. And in point nine, he says exactly analogous relations exist in the dielectric field. The dielectric field or the dielectric flux is proportional to the voltage. So we can see we, that the dielectric field or dielectricity is directly proportional to voltage and the magnetic field is directly proportional to our current or amperes. And these two field types together make the electric field. So, yeah, I hope this was kind of clear. What is electricity? Electricity is always made up of the dielectric and the magnetic field. And this is important to understand. We always have these two fields that make up our electric field or electricity. Because in electricity, as we know it, this, this phenomenon, we always have voltage and amperes. And our voltage is proportional to the dielectric field. The amperes or the current flow is proportional to the magnetic field. And I will show you this now in some experiments and then you will see what I mean with this. So let's continue. Here you see I have my setup with three bifilar coils that are pulsed at their own resonance frequency. So this is basically a high voltage transformer, a very efficient one with very few losses. And yeah, let's start it up. So I have connected here my incandescent light bulb. And if I turn my power supply on, I will go with an input of around 20 volts, as you can see here. And our current is at 0.12 amps. So we have a bit of current flow, meaning magnetic field, dielectric field as an input. And this manifests as a strong dielectric field here because we have relatively high voltage or high tension as Nikola Tesla called it. He called voltage tension. As you can imagine, it's like tension in the dielectric field if it is high with high voltage. And the magnetic field would be our current flow. And here I have a compass. It normally wants to 
go this direction because there is north this way and if I put it on here you will see it will change the magnetic field at this current is very low so it is not influenced that heavy but it is influenced a bit so it will change direction and as you can also see if I turn the voltage down it will align with the Earth's magnetic field again. Let me turn it up again. See, it has turned again. So here we can visualize the magnetic field. And this phenomenon this, that we have here is what we understand as electricity because we have resistance in the wire. So we have a uh, magnetic field and a dielectric field and together they make the electric field which is electricity or what we know as electricity but we can also make it a just purely dielectric phenomenon and this is what is mostly misunderstood or a misconception so I will show you this with some capacitors for this I will turn the power off again and I will, instead of a light bulb, add some capacitors. And before that I have a full bridge rectifier to make the AC to DC to charge up the, these two capacitors. These are two 250 volt capacitors. Together they can be charged up to 500 volts. But for safety reasons I will not charge them up this far. So... Let's start with an input of around 9 volts. Give it a few seconds to charge up. Yeah, should be enough. So I power it off again and then I will short it out. As you see, this was a purely dielectric phenomenon, this spark or event. There was no magnetism involved in this because in a capacitor there is just a dielectric field. We have no magnetism in a capacitor. I will show you this again. And for this, I will charge it up again to around, yeah, I don't know, I, I guess it's around 200, 100 to 200 volts. That's I'm, what I'm guessing from the size of the spark. And now, I come here with my compass and you can see it's it's not influenced. There is no magnetic field. A capacitor never has a magnetic field. There is no magnetic field involved. This is purely a very strong dielectric field in there or very high tension in that the like dielectric field. So if I would touch it anywhere in the metal context, it would hurt a lot. And if the voltage would be high, it could be deadly. So be careful when you do something with high voltage capacitors. And now I will discharge it again. As you can see it holds the charge very well. And make sure it's discharged. Yeah. So this was to show you the difference between uh, dielectricity this is also the same with uh, lightning in the thunderstorm. If you see lightning, this is purely dielectric. Let me charge it up again. This time to a bit higher voltage. That's more fun. <laughs> yeah, should be enough. Yeah. This was the same thing as a lightning in a thunderstorm. A purely dielectric discharge. Has nothing to do with the phenomenon we call electricity, what we had here. So when we power up our electric devices, we always have resistance in this device and this resistance causes the, a magnetic field to appear because we have a current flow. We, don't, we, we not only have a dielectric field, but we have both the dielectric and the magnetic field. And together they make up the electric field. I know I'm repeating myself, but this is very important to understand and to know. And another thing, 
that you might probably have seen before is an electromagnet like this is just a coil from a power supply but we could perfectly make an electromagnet out of this by just connecting a DC voltage to here and here and this is a ferrite core in it and what happens is we create a strong magnetic field when we do this so this would kind of be the opposite of this setup if we, if we um, create a magnetic field with an electromagnet yeah I hope this gave you a bit of an understanding of what these phenomena are and what the differences are and I will also link the book that I've shown before it's called Electric Discharges, Waves and Impulses and that's free on archive.org and if you read the first 20 pages you're really good to go you have really enough knowledge to start some experiments in electrical engineering yeah enough talk for today that's it so have a nice day and thanks for watching